All righty, folks, we are now 5-0 in my last five extra daily picks on my premium page. We had the Nuggets minus six and a half yesterday, and they put up 134 points against the Rockets. And the good news is I have another extra daily pick going off here today for just $2.99. And if you sign up for that membership here today, you're going to get access to that package every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to my daily best play every single day for the next 30 days during that time frame, absolutely free. It's going to be included with your purchase. The math works out to be just nine cents a day for both of those plays each and every day for the next 30 days. And of course, you may be wondering what the difference is between what I do here on the free videos and what I do on my premium page. Well, what I do here with the free videos is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side and total. And what I do on my premium page is, well, I actually share with you which one of these free plays I actually like the best. And if you want to see, uh, if you want to get access to every single premium selection of mine every single day for the next 30 days, you may want to think about signing up for my full access, all-inclusive chairman package. Chairman members get access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. I'm 5-2 and two of my last seven daily best plays. 5-0, and oh, my last five extra daily picks. And finally, folks, I'm 7-2 and two of my last nine chairman package picks on my premium page. And the good news is I have plays going off in all of those memberships here today. It's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into some free content. We're going to start off with the Blazers at the Cavaliers, 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Cleveland is laying a dozen. They're minus 12, totals 220. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, I just don't think the Cavs cover well enough to lay a dozen points here. Uh, they're covering the point spread in only 30% of their home games. And when it comes to offensive production, the Cavs have struggled scoring late in games as well. They're actually a bottom five fourth quarter scoring team in the East. And they're facing a Portland squad on the other side who, believe it or not, they play some of the toughest second half defense in the Western Conference. They actually allow fewer fourth, uh, fourth quarter points than any other roster in the NBA except for two. And when it comes to guarding the three ball, uh, Portland's also third best uh, in the league in guarding the three pointer. They actually. Uh, allow only 10 three balls a game on average. DeAndre Ayton, he has a handful of steals on the defensive end of the court. 11 boards a night for the big man as well. Meanwhile, Jeremy Grant, he leads the lineup in points. And he's been a legit deep ball threat. You can't leave him open. Uh, Grant's drilling nearly 43% of his attempts from beyond the arc. And actually, I said you can't leave him open. Really, uh, he can splash it in your face uh, if you contest those long shots as well. Now, Simons and Wainwright are still out for Portland. Jerome and Wade are inactive for Cleveland. When it comes to the total, the Cavs have seen 60% of their ball games in the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse stay under the number. Uh, Portland has gone 6-2 and two to the under in their last eight. Uh, give me Portland plus 12 under 220. All right, next matchup, it is going to be Hornets net, 7.30 Eastern tip-off. Brooklyn's minus nine, totals 225. And for a team laying nearly double digits, the Nets have um, surprisingly struggled guarding the three-pointer. Uh, they're allowing 14 made three-pointers a game. They're actually in the bottom five in the East in that particular category. And oddly enough, the Nets are allowing the majority of their points in the second quarter. They're actually in the bottom 10 in the NBA in second quarter points allowed. Now, they're facing a Charlotte team who's always looking to uh, kind of step through that back door. It's never over with these guys with regard to the point spread. Uh, this is a top three point producing team in the final 12 minutes. LaMelo Ball, he leads the roster in scoring, and he also drills nearly 40% of his long balls. Now, Terry Rozier scoring 20 a game himself, along with five and a half assists. 
And injury-wise for the Nets, uh, Smith and Thomas are questionable. Clowney's out. Four out of Brooklyn's last seven ball games did get over the total. Meanwhile, Charlotte 6-1 of the over in their last seven road games. Give me the Hornets plus nine over 225. Next ball game, Pistons, Knicks, 7.30 Eastern start time. New York's minus 14, totals 218.5. And, and as bad as the Pistons have been, well, it's New York who's struggled against the point spread here recently. They failed to cover in three out of their last four. Uh, failures to cover against the likes of the Suns, Heat, and Timberwolves. Meanwhile, at the Garden, well, they're covering in just 50% of their ball games there. And of course, New York's biggest issue has been offensive production. These guys are a bottom five point producing team in the league. And no real surprise here, they also have the third lowest offensive field goal percentage in the entire NBA as well. Uh, they're facing a Detroit squad who defends the uh, three ball quite well. They allow only 10 three-pointers a night. They're actually in the top three in the East in that particular category. And believe it or not, guys, this is also a top five rebounding team in the Eastern Conference as well. Jalen Duren grabs just about 11 rebounds a night. Alsair Thompson snags nearly double-digit boards a game himself. When it comes to the injury list, Bogey and Harris are questionable for the Pistons. Archie Diacono, excuse me, uh, he's questionable for New York. Now, total-wise, five out of the Knicks' last eight at the Garden fell under the total. Meanwhile, the Pistons saw unders against the likes of the Wizards, Nuggets, and Cavaliers. Give me Detroit plus 14, under 218.5. Next contest, Pacers, Heat, 7.30 Eastern tip-off. Miami's 2.5, totals 239 and a hook. And even though this is a short number for Miami, they played some pretty bad basketball this week. They're currently on a three-game skid, and they gave up a ton of points in those losses. When it comes to covering the point spread, Miami's been pretty uh, terrible at that at home. They failed to cover in all of their home games this year except for one. And of course, they're facing a Pacer team on the other side who's doing a nice job against the number themselves. They covered in six out of their last 10, and they lead the NBA in scoring. Tyrese Halliburton scores 25 points a night and drills 45% of his three-pointers. Uh, Halliburton's also the NBA leader in assists per game. And, of course, he's typically dishing it to Buddy Heald, who's draining 41% of his three balls himself. Now, injury-wise, McConnell and Jackson are questionable for Indy. Robinson, Adebayo, Highsmith, and Butler are all questionable for the Heat. Miami saw four out of their last seven get over the total. Meanwhile, the Pacers are 9-1 of the over in their last 10. Give me the Pacers plus 2.5 over 239 and a hook. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Hawks, Spurs, 7 o'clock Eastern start, uh, sorry, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Atlanta's minus 7, totals 246. And similar to Indiana, uh, it's the Hawks who really can't be stopped offensively right now. These guys are scoring more points a game than any other team besides the Pacers. And no real surprise, Atlanta's in the top three in the East in field goals made per game. Trey Young's averaging over 25.5 points a night, double-digit assists. DeJounte Murray's dropping over 19.5 points a game himself. They're facing a San Antonio team who plays some terrible defense. These guys allow more second-half points than any other team in the West. No real surprise here, folks. The Spurs, uh, their opponents are making 40% of their three-pointers against them. Now, injury-wise, Sochan and Wemby are questionable for the Spurs. Uh, Jalen Johnson still out for Atlanta. Six out of the Hawks' last 10 ball games did get over the number. San Antonio is currently 78% to the over in their own building. Uh, no real surprise there. These guys just haven't played enough defense. Give me Atlanta minus seven over 246. All right, next ball game should be a good one. Lakers, Thunder, 8 o'clock East. OKC's minus six, totals 233. Oklahoma City is one of the best covering teams in the game right now. They're eight and two against the number in their last 10. And out of 17 total contests this year, uh, OKC's covered the point spread in 76% of those games. And of course, a lot of that is thanks to some prolific scoring. 
Oklahoma City's got the highest offensive field goal percentage in the Western Conference. And a lot of that is thanks to top scorer Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's making nearly 54% of his attempts from the field. Now, teammate Chet Holmgren, he's been the uh, long distance threat. Uh, he's drilling 43% of his shots from three land. Uh, Thunder's taking on a Laker team who struggles defensively on the road. And underneath the basket, well, these guys are just getting out physical. I don't think that's a word. I, I hear guys say that on TV a lot. Out, out physical. That's not a word, right? But I'm going to use it. They're getting out physical. Lakers, bottom three in defensive rebounds on the road. Hayes and Vanderbilt are questionable for the Lakers. Hachimura is still out. When it comes to the total, the Lakers saw their last three straight all get over the total. Oklahoma City went 4-2 and two to the over in their last six. Give me OKC minus six over 233. Next matchup, Bucks Bulls, 8 o'clock east. Milwaukee's the eight-point favorite on the road. Total's 228.5. Now, uh, the Bucks have scored a whole bunch of points on the road this year. Uh, they're a top three point-producing team in their travels. And, of course, Giannis Antetokounmpo, he scores over 30 points a night. He's also averaging double-digit rebounds. And speaking of uh, boards, uh, the Bulls on the other side are a bottom-five rebounding team. And uh, in addition to that, the Bulls are currently on a five-game skid, and they failed to cover the number in seven out of their last eight. Now, when it comes to offensive production, or lack thereof, however you want to look at it, well... These guys do tend to bury themselves right out of the gate. This is the lowest first quarter uh, first quarter scoring team in the game. I'm talking about the Bulls, by the way. Dead last in first quarter points. And of course, we probably should see more of the same. Levine and DeRozan are both listed as questionable. Uh, Caruso is also questionable to play for Chicago. Now, uh, Milwaukee on the other side, they are mostly healthy. Uh, except for Pat Connaughton. He's currently out with an ankle. Now, five out of the Bucks last eight did get over the total. Meanwhile, Chicago saw their last three straight all get over the number themselves. Overs against the likes of Boston, Brooklyn, and Toronto. Give me the Bucks minus eight over 228 and a half. Next ball game, Jazz, T-Wolves, eight o'clock Eastern start time. Minnesota's minus 10 and a half, totals 222. And uh, I tell you, I'm not overly concerned about this double-digit point spread. Uh, Minnesota's covered in all of their home games this year except for one. And most of that is due to some extremely tough defense. Like I said, I would normally shy away from a big point spread like this. But uh, the T-Wolves, they've been impossible to shoot against. Uh, everything's contested. Uh, Minnesota's got the lowest defensive field goal percentage in the game. Now, Rudy Gobert leads the club in blocks and boards. Carl Anthony Towns scores 21 points a night on offense. They're facing a Utah squad on the other side who's actually one of the worst road teams in the game. They've lost all their contests away from home except for one. And when it comes to defensive play, well, uh, their defensive play just hasn't been good enough. Uh, the Jazz, they have the uh, worst defensive field goal percentage on the road in the league. Now, injury-wise, Laurie Markkinen's still out. Chris Dunn is questionable. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, Anthony Edwards is questionable for them. Uh, although I think the T-Wolves can get it done whether he suits up or not. Uh, three out of the T-Wolves' last four ball games fell under the total. Meanwhile, Utah saw their last four straight all stay under the line themselves. Give me Minnesota, minus 10.5, under 222. And with that, folks, we are going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It's going to be in that Clippers-Warriors game. That'll be a 10 o'clock Eastern start time. Golden State's minus five, totals 228. Now the uh, Warriors have not played good enough this year to lay a couple of buckets, at least as of late. Uh, they lost eight out of their last 10, and um, they just can't grab defensive boards at home. Uh, these guys are arguably the worst defensive rebounding team at home in the game. And what's really shocking this year for Golden State, uh, it's been their offensive production. These guys are a bottom five field goal shooting team in the West. They're facing a Clipper club who uh, allows fewer first quarter points than any other team in the league. Uh, really smothers you early in games. 
They also contest like every single shot. They're in the top five in the West in defensive field goal percentage. Uh, top five in the entire league in guarding the three ball. Ivaka Zubac, he leads the roster in blocks. Nine boards a night as well. Meanwhile, Paul George grabs six rebounds a night and leads the roster in scoring. Now injury-wise, Norm Powell is questionable for the Clips. Paul, Garuba, and Peyton inactive. When it comes to the total, Golden State 70% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, the Clippers saw four out of their last seven in-conference road games get over the line. Give me the Clippers plus five over 228. And with that, folks, now it is time for our quick pick recap. Give me the Blazers plus 12 under 220. Charlotte plus nine over 225. Pistons plus 14 under 218 and a half. I'm 5-0 and oh, my last five extra daily picks on my premium page. And the good news is I have another extra daily pick going off here today. The link is in my bio. Pacers plus 2.5 over 239 and a hook. Atlanta Hawks minus 7 over 246. OKC Thunder minus 6 over 233. Milwaukee Bucks minus 8 over 228 and a half. Timberwolves minus 10 and a half under 222. With my next and final pick for the video, give me the Clippers, plus five, over 228. And with that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium page. Now, if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock page, just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. That's how I was, you know, I always tell folks that chairman package, it's a full access, all-inclusive membership. It gives you access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy Thursday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium page at patreon.com slash Brock page.